Leaders in our state are calling it a historic day. On Wednesday, the Hanford Vit plant started processing radioactive waste into safer material. It's the culmination of a years long effort to clean up the Hanford nuclear site. To dig more into this process, we're joined by D David Replog of the Tri-City Development Council. Thank you for being here, David. Thanks for having me. David, you've been involved with getting this plant up and running for years. In the simplest terms, what does this waste treatment plant do? Well, nothing with Hanford is, is usually very simple, but uh, at the Hanford site, the, the Hanford site produced plutonium for America's national security mission beginning during World War II and produced about two thirds of America's nuclear weapons plutonium uh, by the end of the Cold War. But as part of that process, they created a lot of waste. Uh, and much of that waste was, was has been stored in 177 underground tanks at the Hanford site, some of them as large as a million gallons. So very large tanks. And it's uh, been sitting out there, some of it for upwards of 75 plus years. And so what the vitrification facility will do is it will begin to take that waste out of the tanks, some of which have leaked in the past, and solidified it, solidify it into a solid glass form. Uh, that's a much safer way for long-term disposal of the waste. Why has it taken so long to get here? There's a lot of complexity with the Hanford waste. Uh, there, it, it's taken a lot of different forms over the years. Uh, and so what What's really momentous about this occasion is that uh, this is one of probably one of the most challenging and technically complex uh, facilities that the Department of Energy has ever built, and the process to the design, engineering, construction of the facility, the permitting, all that's required to get to this point um, has just been been a challenge. And and I would add too that there has been various changes in directions over the years that have caused some delays. But um, but we're really glad to be at the point where we are now. What's the advantage of this process, David? The advantage is that when the waste is in the tanks. Um, some of the tanks, again, are, are upwards of almost 80 years old. Um, it does run a risk of leaking into the soil or of um, you know, the tanks eventually becoming unstable. Uh, not that there's any unstable tanks at this point. They're actually, it's being safely stored for the time being, uh, but looking at far into the future, it's just not a safe way to permanently store uh, this this waste. And so getting it out of the tanks and into a stable form that's solidified, uh, that can be stored underground without the chance of it leaching or leaking into the, the, the soil or, or eventually making its way to the Columbia River here uh, is just a far safer way to keep the waste. And now this is starting with low activity radioactive waste. There's a 2033 deadline set to begin vitrifying high activity level waste. Do you think that deadline will be met? I'm hopeful. I think that there has been a lot of lessons learned as, as you alluded to, there's this process has been ongoing for well over 20 years to get to the point where low activity waste vitrification is beginning. Um, and because of the lessons learned in that time, uh, not that the high level waste vitrification process is going to be easy, but uh, I, I'm hopeful that the lessons learned over these years um, will allow it to happen. The other big uh, component is that we ensure that we have adequate funding uh, for the work to be done. How much is this costing and where's the money coming from? Uh, Congress appropriates the funds on an annual basis and we've had just tremendous support from Senator Murray, Senator Cantwell, Congressman Newhouse from the 4th Congressional District and before him, uh, Congressman Doc Hastings. And um, and they put a lot of time and energy into ensuring that Hanford uh, gets the funding it needs for the cleanup effort. Uh, but it's going to require also uh, strong support from the administration, from uh, the White House as well as from uh, the Department of Energy, Energy Secretary Chris Wright. Um, and so uh, without that, then costs go up and timelines extend. Absolutely. What's going to happen to all of this glass and, and how much are we looking at? What's the timeline here? If you can answer those two questions. Yeah, so the, the timeline is, again, what we're celebrating today is that low activity waste vitrification has now begun, but it will realistically take 
probably decades to to solidify all of the tank waste um, at Hanford, both the low activity waste and the high level waste. Um, there's a total of about 56 million gallons of, of waste being stored in these tanks. About 90% plus of that waste is low activity waste. And then the other five to 10% is high level waste. Um, the low activity waste will be stored, some of the vitrified low activity waste will be stored permanently at the Hanford site. Um, and then the high level waste, once it's vitrified, will need to go to a deep geological repository that had been Yucca Mountain in the past, but at this point, um, Yucca Mountain seems to be off the table. And so uh, we're hoping that, again, this administration and this Congress will begin working hard to identify what the deep geological repository is, not only for Hanford's waste, but for um, waste from across the country. Well, that's a question that remains to be answered, and we'll be keeping an eye on it. David, thank you for your time. Thank you.